For this video, we're going to dive into smart bones a little bit more. At one point, I went in and created a smart action for the tail. And as you can see, when we move this dial up or down, we're able to control the tail. And that's what we're going to be exploring here. Just defining this a little bit more and showing you some more examples of how it can work. So first, let's go back to frame zero and we're going to create a new bone to control the head. And we can attach this bone to the head bone so that way if the character were to move anywhere, the controls will stay with him. So with the head bone selected, I'm going to grab the add bone tool, come in here, and I'll click and drag and just move this out horizontally like so and release. I can name this one head up and down, or let's just say head U dash D. That should work for our purposes. And then come over here to select bone and make sure we are showing the label. Next, I want to go to my bone constraints, choose angle constraints, and we're going to go negative 90 and 90 for this. And then we can close it. So we now want to assign the action so that when the bone moves down, the head or the cheeks in this case, we'll just do the cheeks, will move down and vice versa for when we move it up. So now in order to get this started, we need to create an action for this bone. So with the bone selected, we can come over here to the actions panel, click on new action and make sure that the action name is the same as head UD and then click OK. Now, when you set up your actions, it's always best to have more frames than you need. In the event you were to animate this bone, let's say across 120 frames or even 96, if you only had, let's say, 12 frames of animation in this action and you had 48 frames that you needed to animate with this bone, you're going to find that the animation could end up looking choppy. So when you're setting up your actions, it's always best to have more frames than you need. In this case, we're going to go to frame 96, and that's going to be the duration for each of our smart bones. So I'm going to grab these frames and just bring it over like so. And you can see now we have 96 frames of animation for this particular action we're building. Now, one more thing before we continue, you'll notice that the bone, due to bone strength, is bringing the warp layers along with it. And we don't want that. So going back here to frame zero, I'm going to grab the bone strength tool and just click and drag to the left to reduce the strength. So now we have this going on and we don't have any interference with the other layers. So with this moving down now, let's go back to frame one and then find the head warp layer. You can use control or command F to lock down your frames. Now let's go to frame 96. And with this move down, we're going to move the cheeks down with it. So I'll grab the magnet tool, click and drag, and I'm just going to move some things down like so. Again, we could go into much detail with creating a head, perhaps looking up and down. But in this case, I'm just going to do some very minor work, just enough to get us a visual representation of what can happen here. So now we have the head going up like this and down like so. Now I want to create a second action that's going to do the opposite of this. So we have this now, the bones going down and we have the head going down. We now want to create a second action for this. So what I'm going to do is just come over here and jump outside to mainline, making sure that you have the bone layer selected along with the head up and down bone. We're going to create a new action. And this time it's going to be called head up and down two, and then we can click okay. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. You may recall, if I go to the first one, it goes down. So now for the second one, we want it to go up. So at frame 96, we can just bring it all the way up like that. And then for your head warp, we're just going to come in and we can bring some things up.
There we go. So now it's going up, just like that. Now if we come back here to the main line, and we go to frame 24, we can make sure we're on the bone layer, and start animating some things out. So if we go down, you can see it goes down. If we go up, it goes up. And again, it's not the best looking animation. I would have to spend more time molding this and creating a pleasing result. But given the tutorial nature of this, and I want to show you as fast as I can, this is what we have. But hopefully that makes some sense as to how you can set this up. One thing you don't want to do is put both of these actions in one action. So as an example, you might be tempted to create a neutral position for when it's horizontal and then in one action have it go down and then up. And you don't want to do that. That can create issues with how Moho functions with these bones. So in this case, if you want one bone to have two directions, it's always best to make sure you have two actions assigned to one bone. You could also separate the bones out. You could have one bone go for up and one bone go for down. It just depends on how you want to set it up. And finally, here's another example of how we can use these bones. Go back here to frame zero. I'm on the bone layer, and now I want to create a new bone. I'm just going to hold and shift and draw it up. And I'm going to name this one blink. And we can show the label. Let's go to our bone constraints. And we're going to shore this up to, let's say, negative 30 and 30. And then we can close this. Now, I want to make sure I have my actions. And we're going to click on the new action and make sure it's named Blink. And then click OK and go inside. And we're just going to quickly make this control the switch layer. So coming in, I'm just going to grab this and move it over to the left. And then on frame 24, we can move it over to the right. And in this case, we don't really need that many frames given it's a switch layer. So it's just going to pop to the next layer. So there's no real reason to have a bunch of animation in this particular action. So we're just going to leave it like that. And then when the bone is perhaps all the way over to the left, we can come over here to, for instance, the eyes and choose to have these open. And then when the blink bone is in the middle, we can come in and choose to have, let's say, blink down. And then when it's all the way to the end, perhaps it's at blink up. So now if I go back here to mainline and go into the bone layer, and let's just go to any frame past zero, you can see I can come in and alter that. And of course, let's make sure we also have the bone strength turned down for this. So we're not altering the warp layers like we were just a moment ago. So come in here now. And you can see here, we can adjust the blinks very easily. And we can also independently move this up and down. And everything is looking pretty good. Good enough for this tutorial. Again, if I wanted to go in and do more head animation, I would spend more time with this. But, but just some final notes when creating your actions. Make sure you leave plenty of frames. 96 frames is a good number. When you want to create, let's say, a head turn or an action that has two different actions in it, it's best to separate them out. So don't create one action, create two actions that will do the left and right, up and down, or whatever the case is with your rig. So with that, hopefully you have a little bit of understanding of how you can create smart actions inside of Moho.